Hi, it's Ian, and welcome back to my 30 days of knife skills. This is day 24, and I'm working with kale. Kale is one of those things that people are calling superfoods, and maybe it can become a little bit divisive because um, there's people who just like to eat it for health benefits and maybe don't really care that much about making it taste delicious. So there's, I think there's a little bit of uh, controversy or kind of back and forth among people on um, some of the best ways to eat kale. But anyway, leaving that aside, this came from the farmer's market. I think this is uh, the Lacinato variety. I think it's also called Tuscan kale, but it's the flat, flatter leaf and the edges are also not that curly. It's that, that variety. So it must be in season right now here. Um, so I'm not one of those people who enjoys the, the raw kale salad. Might be okay if it's like baby, baby kale, tiny kale that's just coming out of the ground. That might be okay. But when is this size? It's not one of my favorite things. Um, it just tastes overly, uh, chlorophyll -y and kind of tough. So I think it's way better cooked, um, whether it's in a soup or my favorite way is to just do a long, long braise, just like I would uh, collard greens. So, and it can stand up to long cooking. And it just soaks up a lot of flavor. It also releases flavor into the to the broth. So, the first thing, I have a bunch here that, that um, the ends look a little bit tired. So, I will use sort of the back of the more hardy part of the knife near the heel to take off this kind of the, the back end part. And then from here, decide if this kale in particular, try to decide if this should be removed or leave it in there. So it depends on the cook. I think if I was going to cook this for one to two hours, which I do pretty often, um, this might be okay actually. It looks not too dried out. It's still early in the season. It doesn't feel too hard, but let's pretend that I'm going to cook it a shorter time. Um, or it's too hard even for a longer cook. So the way I usually do it is just take the tip of the knife about to, not all the way, but almost all the way, um, and take off this, the stemmy hard part in the center. So then I would just, from here, um, Kind of depends on what kind of shapes I want. If I want, um, if I don't really care about the about uh, making it small because I'm going to do a very long cook, um, then I would just something like that is plenty. Some kind of just just shapes like this. It'll break down enough that that I can just eat it in a long braise. So long braise I like to do like. Um, maybe one bunch of kale, one or two onions, um, sliced medium thin, and uh, some chicken stock or some kind of a broth, and a little bit of chili, fresh or usually dried chili I have, and uh, just put the lid on, put it in a cast iron Dutch oven, put it on low heat, just let it go for 60 minutes, 90 minutes, it doesn't really matter. Um, two hours, it's, it's totally fine, so. Um, maybe a little bit of acid at the end, some vinegar or lemon juice is also good, but otherwise it's just, yeah, it's just a, a great thing to have in the winter time, especially when, when you're craving something that's kind of hearty and, and warm. It's a good thing to do. So that's the cut I would have for something like that. Um, if I was thinking about a different kind of braise, then I might um, well, I could actually stack it up. I might actually keep the st stems in and do something like a eighth to a quarter inch. And this would cook faster overall. I would just go all the way up with this kind of, this kind of slicing. Um, this would definitely cook a lot faster because it's smaller and it's also easier to eat instead of having chunks of uh, part, you know, leafy part or the stem. It's a lot easier to eat, it breaks down more quickly. So I might do this and throw it in the soup that I'm making and, and uh, it'll be ready in a few minutes. Could do a braise as well and, and um, not nearly need to cook as long as you would for chunks like this.
as opposed to if I was doing that with the stem up. Um, so another way might be kind of intermediate chunks. Uh, in that case, maybe I would um, go into sort of one-inch pieces like that, this kind of shape. So usually I would just do a whole bunch of them and then stack it up and, and uh, do something like this. Um, that would be, again, a little bit smaller than this size. Cook faster. There's no stem in this. Um, in a soup, it'll only be a few minutes. Heat it through, and it'll be totally fine. So I think if people are fans of kale chips, which I don't really quite get it yet. I've had commercial ones. I've made it myself a few times. I don't quite understand what the what the uh, allure of kale chips may be. Calling them chips is um, kind of false advertising. You expect a certain thing, and it's still... I don't know, it still kind of tastes too green and and um, it doesn't quite brown evenly. So maybe if you take this and deep fry it, it might be different. From But uh, usually kale chips are done in the oven. Cut it up like this, maybe a little bit bigger. I think uh, toss it with olive oil, salt, pepper, put it on a sheet pan and kind of put it in a, in a moderately low oven for a while until it dries out, gets crispy. Um, so for that... Um, I don't tend to make that. I prefer really long cooked versus chips or um, especially raw. I'm not quite a quite a huge fan of that. But um, in that case, maybe from this stage, something like that would be good for kale chips. No, and. Um, one of the things I see out there in restaurants is uh, something like like a kale Caesar. Another way, by the way, to remove the stem. Um, it could be faster if you turned it over. Maybe maybe you wouldn't quite get it as cleanly as how, how I've been getting, the, getting these uh, stems off. But you could fold it over and kind of start up here and, and kind of do that. Not quite as clean, but faster for sure. Um, could probably just rip this off too, like that. So if I was, for some reason, going to have a make a kale salad, I would probably do the same idea as this kind of a quick braise technique and try to, through the size and the shape, kind of break down those, those fibers into something a little bit more manageable. And I have heard that if you um, salt and olive oil it and sort of massage it for a while, or you could let it sit, it does start to break down some of that. So this kale is actually, it's early in the season. It's still pretty supple. And it's, uh, I think it's, if I was going to do a raw salad, then something like this would be okay. But especially later in the season or other, other varieties that aren't quite as, as uh, tender in the leaves relatively, then um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's not my favorite thing to to have it raw. But if I was going to, I would probably do this, and then maybe see if I could massage it with oil a little bit and see if I can break down some of those those uh, tougher kale fibers. So pretty much whatever uh, whenever I have kale, uh, just very quickly take off the stem, chop it up in this kind of shape, throw in the cast iron with uh, sliced onions. And a little chili and a little bit of doesn't really take that much stock if you have a lid on it and just let it go and it's like it's like uh, it's like cooking rice in a rice cooker you could just start it and then you can eat it whenever you want to it's sort of like that um, and it's also of course great with rice because there's there's uh, so much great juice that that uh, is produced it's almost just as good or even better than the, than the actual vegetable is the the juice the leftover liquid that, that comes out of that kind of a braise. So I would be careful not to add uh, vinegar or some kind of acid in the beginning of the braise because um, acid definitely slows down cooking quite a bit. And sometimes it'll halt any kind of tenderization. So uh, the reverse would be if you want to speed it up, you would want to raise the pH and make it more alkaline. So one thing that some people do is use baking soda. Um, if I was trying to get this, if I was in a very much of a hurry, 
uh, and I wanted to get this quickly softened, I would probably throw it all in, in there, get it on high heat, and then maybe a little tiny bit of baking soda. And that would do the opposite of an acid, where it would um, acid would prevent it from softening, which is good in some cases, but in this case, um, we probably want it to soften more. So anyway, that is what I do with kale. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll see you on the next one.